Ever since the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, there have been many people who made their mark on British railways. And now on YouTube, one rail enthusiast from the Staffordshire town of Rugeley, who is passionate about the trains and making his own mark on the railways too, give his own opinions about the railways today, the history and the future and gives you a behind the scenes of how to get to their destinations to do what I love best, build trains. Good morning and welcome to Rooshi Tro Bay for the first time since God knows how many months. We're actually at a Rooshi station to start off today. Wow. Unfortunately like the, Mr. Unfortunately like Mr. Video Chat, we won't make an arse of ourselves in front of a camera. Yes, that is the one a cheap swipe, blatantly as well. I've seen these videos. Anyway. <laughs> that's for that and uh, like I said, we're at Moosha Tread Valley. A few little um, facts for you. It was opened on the 15th of September 1847. Um, it is on the outskirts of Rouge, you've got to walk that way into the town centre, unfortunately. Or, do, simple, just get the train to Rouge Town. No, take about three minutes. And. 33 if the train don't turn up. Well, we're on the Tread Valley line, of course, between Stafford and Rugby. Um, it's a pretty basic station, you've got. Waiting room there, waiting room there, a couple of speakers that give you tough information and a ticket machine, self served as well. And um, it is a minor station, unfortunately, on this Tread Bay line, which the changes are for trades are actually quite rubbish. And um, over on that platform one over there, Queen Elizabeth named uh, 67029 here, Royal Diamond. On the Oh no, I don't have a date. It's somewhere in October anyway. No, is it? I'll I think, find it, out it, I think it was. It was October 2000 and something or other. Yeah. So, today we are going to Oxford, which is a posh place. As you know, we see, I did an Oxford uh, documentary last year, but I was only there for a few hours, then went to Dickcott, then came back. But today we're going to have six hours there at Oxford. A lot of time. That's a lot of time. Oh, um. Six and a half, actually. Well, six and a half. Quickly before I go on today's journey of the trains, is that platform three here is for London Euston. Platform two is for Crewe, which is the one over there on the four tracks. And platform one is for Birmingham. All served by London Midland. That's if the Birmingham train turns up. Uh, we're on the... On V20. Have a word. <laughs> one V20, I don't think you mean one U20. One U20. Well, the one U20 0733 down to London, Euston. Then we have to get, which we're actually going to London for the first time since the Olympics. Because the last time I went to London was the 25th and I tried to deliver myself to London because of the Olympics. Second time for me because I went. Whatever. Okay. No one cares about you. We'll see. And, um,. So we're actually going to London for the first time. Yay, London's back on the agenda. Getting the um, tube over to Paddington, and then we're going on the 1W29, the 1126? 1120. 1120 to Great Malvern, which hopefully should be a FGW class 180. It's not my first ride on one, but it is on the first Great Western one, but I have been on one before when they were up in the north. Plus with the, Northern Rail. I think the units that they've got that work at the moment are the Northern units. So Yeah. Which I uh, went to Pleasant to Blackpool on one. Lucky. Two years ago. And uh, on the well, as soon as we get to Oxford, on the 18E36, 1M66 to Manchester Piccadilly from Bournemouth. Patrick! Unfortunately. Well, we hope it's not. And when we get back to Birmingham for about quarter to eight. Yeah, quarter to eight. We've got about a good half an hour in Birmingham for the 2017 2K31 back to Rushi Town. <coughs> if it runs. Um, so hopefully it should be a good day today. On today's leg of the journey, 
FGW means another word. The first time I've seen one of these in Oxford. And what the hell does London Underground have to do with this trip?
Great Western London Birmingham Main Line, former Great Western, and um, about half a mile west from the city centre, apparently. And um, GWR opened it in, well, opened one which was further south here, which I'll explain in a minute, in 1844, 12th of June. It's a terminus station where now uh, Western Road is. The station was called Grandport, or but it was known as Oxford, but it was in Grandport area near Hinksley or somewhere like that. Uh, the Oxford Rugby Railway opened as a through station in 1852, which is where we are now, roughly. Um, Grand Point Tourist Station became good to depot and then closed on the 26th of November 1872, which is further down there, Hinksley again. That was also the same year that the Great Western Broad Gauge here was lifted north of Dickert. Um, we moved with the train shed here in 1890 to 1891. Used to have a train shed here apparently. Rebuilt in 1971 and then 1990, which is the current station now. Um, Southern locomotives also stopped here from the south. They only changed locos here, but then had another local to carry on to the north. And um, also, the other side of the station here, which all houses now and all that was Oxford Rudley Road. But apparently the Bradshaw timetable was known as Oxford Oxford Rudley Road. Instead of how it was pronounced R-E-V-L, it was R Double O L. For some reason we don't know. Um, that was the but down there had the Buckshire Railway which ran Surtees to Fletchley and Cambridge that way. Then it got absorbed into LNWR and the LNS. It um, opened in 1851, the 20th of May, and then 100 years later, 1st of October 1951, they closed it. Um, but they closed it and transferred all services to this one here, which was Oxford General. And the good side stayed open down there till 1984, and it was also known as the variety that. <laughs> I see died or something like that. Varsity. Yeah. But well, speaking about um, services to Cambridge and all that, there is a future project in that which I'll explain in a minute because there's a Vo Voyager coming in now. Right before I was rudely interrupted by cross country, 
idiots. Crap. And um, I was on about um, East West Rail, or just about to move on to it. Because, um, yes, the LSD Grand Service is the Cambridge from here, but that station closed. And now they're running, um, the, well, they're planning to reopen it. So they're reopening it to Milton Keynes from Bletchley, from here. So it's here to Bletchley, then to Bedford, which that line's already exists as part of the Master Bell line. Then a place called Sandy, and then to Cambridge that way. For those who don't know where Sandy is, it's near Huntingdon. Yeah, somewhere around there. This route will be completed in 2017, and apparently it's also going to be electrified as well, which is going to be interesting. 365s? 377s? Don't know. Don't know what's that going to run, but that's the East West Rail that's they're going to be working on. The government have already approved it, so it's going ahead. Sweet. Services here. Uh, well, you get your Manchester, Bournemouth, and uh, Newcastle, Reading, slash Southampton, which are cross country. You you also do get one from Edinburgh, and two Edinburgh as well. Apparently so as well then. Um, First Great Western do London Paddington to here, which they terminate, go to the carriage lines, come back. Some get extended to um, Cotswolds like Portland Marsh, Worcester State, Shrub Hill, or Fourgate yep. Street, Great Malvern and Hereford. Then you get your Oxford Banbury local. And um, Chilton, which is right behind me here, run them lot. The service is to Bicester North, Bicester Town. They were First Great Western, but now they're owned by Chilton Railways, who's part of their Evergreen project, which is going to be London Malibu to Oxford to by Vista. They're building a curve from Vista Town onto the Chilton Bay Line. And also, sometimes Chilton use Oxford as a tourist station if this engineering works on the Chilton Bay Line past Banbury to London. And also, um, Oxford, a bit of history of Oxford, they also had um, some Mongo bands around here, which is like uh, the early tra car carriers. There was a factory down there, I think it was the Morris Billy or something like that, which I can't remember. I was told about this a couple of years ago, and they used to run trays from here of these Mongo bands, which is like a normal covered van, four wheels of course, to a long bridge and all that. Um, they were designed in the 1930s. I remember the guy that I met Dick a couple of years ago called Richard Tolley, or short A, Dick Tolley. Sadly, he's not with us anymore, but um, he did, was an Oxford engineer man around this area. He also has a book out um, called Steam Inspires, which you can buy on Amazon eBay still, but it's a book from the 80s. We recommend you buy that book. But now we're here at Oxford, like I said. And we're going to stand around here a couple of bit. This right here is Pass 43 HST. This one is 43 And they were built in the mid 70s. These say British Railways arses, which is true. With the help of Jimmy Savile as well. These have been all over the place. West Coast Bay Line, East Coast Bay Line, South West, even Wales from Whitehead, Blackpool North, uh, Midland Bay Line. Well, I'm not certain who's down. 
final destination, Rushi Town today and we've been all over the region to London, to Oxford, to Birmingham, back to Rushley. As you see I'm probably shaking a little bit because it is absolutely freezing, well not freezing freezing but freezing. Uh, we just come off 17503 which was to uh, do the service to Birmingham to Rushley and well that's the end of, what? Yeah, well, we just Oh. Okay. And that's today's end of the journey. No oh, signals just. Yes, we've still got the set full signals around here for now. But, um. Yes, 
It's right. so cold you can hardly talk. Yeah, it is actually. But no, anyway, so we had a good day. So it was, went down to London on London Midland. Got there a little late, but not too much. I think, we were five minutes late. I think we were about five ish. Yeah. Five minutes late, got on time to go to then down that way. Uh, hanged around London for a bit, got off Great Portland Street. Is it Great Portland Street? Yes, Great Portland Street. Great Portland Street, Phil Smith stock. Then went to Paddington, got on the 180, 180, 104 to Great Malvern. Uh, stayed at Oxford for six hours, got some HSTs. There was a stupid guy that was basically hiding his face when we ate the cameras at him, one the dispatchers. Grow up. We're not after you, we're after the fucking new yeah, no, trains. Toss about, yeah, go and toss about the trains. Excuse my language. And I have to be honest. Then, after that, we got a train back from Oxford to Burger, we sat next to a drunk. Nothing new there. Oh, she was drunk. She, she was mothered. Mm hmm. And then had Burger King and then Burger back to here. So it's been an alright day, actually, so. At least it's. At least don't make it at himself like screaming in front of the camera like some Mr. Video Chat. By the way, if you watch that video, it will put you to sleep. At the end, these outtakes are so not funny, it will make me want to go to sleep. They're, they're so not funny that they make racist jokes by that guy who did them on Katie Price's son. Funny. Because all he is, it's a sample wannabe. Ooh. A sample wannabe, yeah. That's all he is. Getting his face on YouTube, he's a sample wannabe. The other people aren't. Alex Dodds, good videos. Lewis Smith, good videos. I thought it was Lewis Curtis. Lewis Curtis, sorry, good videos. Jake Neal, good videos. Jim Kettle. Jim Kettle, good videos. Dylan Clinton, good videos. In fact, when he's snuck... Oops, I just made his name. Oh, fuck it. William Snook, well basically, he's a piss take of egg one. All them people that do good videos, he just takes he's taking the mick out of them by doing one himself. Don't worry. His time will come. Mm-hmm. Anyway. And if anyone and if anyone Snook followers watch this and report it, go ahead. Because you will have me to deal with. See see the face, face? Not bothered. Yeah, not bothered. I don't give a damn, I'll say what I say. Because I've got the balls to say it. And it's a free country. Free country, free channel. Anyway, enough with that git, because to, to be honest, I don't really give two f- about him. And plus you've been talking for four minutes, six seconds. But now uh, we're going to end the video now. You can subscribe to us on Twitter. Whoa, you have Twitter? <laughs> um. You can subscribe to us on Facebook at Siren Traitor, Siren Trip, Paul's British Railway Journeys. Of course, the Twitter one is also at Siren Traitor as well. And well, I'm just going to stand here for the rest of the night shaking like a leaf. Good night, everyone. You can see here, there's a hundred quid's worth of real vouchers in here. It's all London Midlands fault.